but in america like there are some black men where you have to question like oh does he also date black men guys what is that if the black man is not for you who is like for real like for real <laughs> headquarters revolution gang if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution also please make sure that you turn on your post notifications so you know every single time that I post because I don't know if you guys saw my Instagram story where I explained it but um, pretty much you guys can expect inconsistency from me because I'm going through a transition phase in my life right now so I'm working on um, getting myself back to being myself you know i'm dealing with burnout and i'm literally starting a whole new chapter in my life and i can't do that while being burnt out then of course i'm starting a whole new chapter so i'm gonna be busy doing new things having to adjust so you can definitely expect inconsistency from me but to counter that please make sure you turn on your post notifications because normally i post every wednesday and as much as i'm gonna try honor that like today this video is coming out on thursday you know so but if you have your post notifications on you will know every single time that i post so guys in today's video we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of living abroad so as you know or as some of you may know and those of you who don't know my name is benita danielle i'm a south african youtuber slash accountant i moved to america five years ago when i was like 18 years old moved all by myself no family in america still don't have any family in America so I'm literally all by myself still obviously over those five years I've built a community for myself however um, I just graduated with my MBA so I'm moving from the only city I've ever known in America moving to a whole new city so it's almost like starting a new chapter all over again it feels like I'm moving there for the first time new place new home new role it's very overwhelming um, and so today I want to talk about the pros and cons of living in America should I start with the pros or the cons maybe I should start with the cons so that I can end off with like a positive note right <laughs> hey let me do that I'm gonna start the cons so I can end off in a positive note um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that living abroad is hard it is the hardest thing that you can ever do in your whole entire life it is difficult more especially if you are alone it is challenging heartbreaking isolating lonely tiring um, and the worst part about it is that people who remain in the country that you left whether you are from South Africa like I am or whatever country you're from they always think you have it better they always think like oh my gosh if I had the opportunity to be you I would never leave abroad I would they say that to people who when people talk about it being hard or when people actually move back to their countries the response you get is oh my gosh you fumbled the bag if I was you I would never leave how could you blow an opportunity like that but guys living abroad will teach you that your emotional well-being is as important um, than your economic well-being or your you know what I'm saying so like most people move abroad because they're chasing opportunity for one reason or the other that's the common story and so because that's the situation you long for home you know like but you know you're chasing something so there's a lot of pressure that people put onto you to stay in that country even though you're not happy even though you don't want to and and there's the expectation that you're doing great you're doing amazing even though you're not like something that I commonly struggle with is people will always say to me oh my gosh America is so much better than SA it's so much safer than South Africa and yet when I'm in America I'm always on edge I never feel at peace because at any time there could be a mass shooting because mass shootings happen in grocery stores in schools in in at workplaces they happen everywhere but in South Africa I've never lived with the fear of a mass shooting. I've lived with the fear of hijacking because that's happened to me in South Africa. I've been hijacked and my family's been through a lot. Um, but you know, I'm, I feel unsafe when it comes to hijackings or crime when I'm in specific areas or when I'm in a certain car and I'm like, oh, this is like hijacking type car or again, in specific areas. But there are certain areas where I go where I feel fine. I don't go to certain malls and I'm on edge because anything could happen. But in America, I go to Walmart grocery shopping and I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope nothing happens here because they sell guns at Walmart. You know what I'm saying? The safety 
element I, f I definitely feel less safe in America and it's more consistent than in in South Africa you know but again um, people don't necessarily honor my feelings because to them they're just like they only see the evil in their country and they think oh but even if America's bad it's still better bro you think the shot the chance of being shot at any second is better you think it's better <laughs> oh, be for real not to mention I'm now black in America I can't go around saying I'm not black I'm South African I'm not African American I'm black they're not gonna reserve their racism and discrimination and abuse for specifically African Americans they just see black skin the moment you move to America and you're black you're black you're not this that you're black you know so being South African, of course I grew up um, experiencing racism, seeing it in school, seeing it wherever it happens, but America is different. Being black in America is tiring to the point where I got burnt out and I was like, I'm so tired of being black. I've never said that in South Africa. But in America, I was like, I'm so tired of being black. You know, um, you, you have your, I'm scared of the police. You know, um, in SA, the police make me uncomfortable, but like, I don't think they're gonna kill me. I'm scared of the police in America. I'm like terrified. I don't feel safe, you know, even though I've not done anything and whatever, but like, I know what happens. I see what happens and I have to be vigilant. Whether I like it or not, I have to be vigilant, you know. There's that safety concern that I, that I would say is a con living in America. And again, it doesn't help when people put pressure on you thinking, even though you feel like your life is always under threat, people are like, oh, but it doesn't matter. Like someone in America was shot. Like, you know, when you get lost in a neighborhood um, and then you reverse into someone's yard, just so you can turn around, not into the yard, like just by their gate, so you can turn around. Someone got shot in America doing that and it was a white woman too, she wasn't even black. Do you understand what I'm saying? People are trigger happy there, guys. They are trigger happy and it happens in so many different neighborhoods. And I find that to be very scary, you know? Um, so I would say that's a con of living in America. Um, another one that I, I think is actually one of the biggest ones is you are alone. And not only are you alone, but you are othered, you know? You can find a community, you can find your people, but like you will never be American. You will never fit in. You will never, because there are certain spaces where even African Americans, um, you know, black Americans, they reject Africans, you know? So like, even though you're black and you're like, oh, we're all black. They're like, no, we don't hold a space for you. Not everywhere, not all the time. And personally, I haven't had that be an issue majorly in my life. I've had comments made, but like, it hasn't been an issue for me. But you never feel like you belong. Never. You never feel like you belong. Um, and you know you don't. You know, because you're so different. And if you're like me, you still have your accent or you still have a South African way of thinking and doing things. You never feel like you belong quite. You'll find your place, you'll find your people, you'll build a home, you'll find family, but you you know you're not from there. You'll never be from there, you know? So there's that element that will forever be missing. Um, there's certain things from home that you'll never be able to get. You just want biltong. I don't want beef jerky, I want biltong. I want drivers, I don't want beef jerky. I don't want, you know, whatever. You, you know what I'm saying? So just that feeling of always feeling othered and, and different, it can, can, can be really tough as well you know um more especially when you're surrounded by again majority white people which i've been over the last couple of years there's the racial difference there's the country difference there's, there's so many differences that can be othering now, i would say never feeling like you belong um and then again being alone so for me one of the hardest parts about being in america by myself is being alone all the time you know um you don't realize I have a good family guys, I have a very supportive family, I have a family that shows up for me, I have a family that wants to make my life easy. But when I'm in America, it's so bad, it's almost like I forget I have that. So when I come back to South Africa, it feels so good and I'm like, oh wow. Sometimes my parents will say to me like, why don't you talk to us, why don't you let us help you or whatever. And it's because I'm so used to doing things on my own because I don't have them around. There are certain things they can't even help me with because they don't know how the American way works and I'm also figuring it out, you know? You know when you're growing up and your parents are showing you, oh, this is how credit works, this is how this works, you know? And so it's like I, I'm missing that element a little bit because my parents also don't know um, about certain American events because they're not from there. So it's like they can't help. And hopefully you can find a parental figure who's willing to help you and assist you with those things. But how often are people really willing to, to latch onto you and help you like that? America is very individualistic as opposed to um, like collectivism, you know? So it's, it's also very much a every man for themselves type of world, you know, where it's like people don't always envelope you in community and, and really want to help you or, you know, 
if you seek out that help they're like oh of course of course it does happen don't get me wrong please 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 don't confuse me there are many people in america who will help you who will extend a hand and and one day i'll make a video talking about the kindness of strangers you know so there are people who will do that so please don't think i'm saying that american people will never help you they will they are there they will help you if you can find them and maybe that's true for everywhere right except again when you're in a foreign country you just have a little competitive disadvantage you know because you know less than your average american and your community is smaller than your average american so um just not having my family is so much harder for me having to figure things out i feel like i'm fighting for everything things that aren't as hard for me in essay in america i'm just fighting tooth and nail to make it work or to figure it out everything is just harder because i'm by myself and i'm figuring it all out by myself and i'm alone and i can't always consult with people you know so um that's the part that's hard sometimes i get sad and i get overwhelmed and i just want to hug from my mom and it's not there i can't get it my mom's in south africa you know i want to hug from my dad i want to hang out with my dad and it's not there he's in SA. you know what i'm saying i just want to hang out with my sibling they just come in my room and bother me but i just want that and i don't get to have that you know and so something that you realize is that you are responsible for building your own family and your own community and you start from zero and fact of the matter is friends will never be as loyal to you as family will actually that can be not true so take that with a pinch of salt but generally speaking generalizing here it's not true for everyone your family has your back in a way that friends tend to not have um, your family also has your back without it being reciprocal oftentimes so you don't have to earn their love earn their help by virtue of you being family they'll help you but I'm in America by myself and I don't have family so um, things are very conditional you know and things change and people can take back their help if they no longer feel like it or if you don't benefit them you know so that's definitely something that's also hard relating to that topic guys hyper independence is so difficult it's something that my family is now fighting with me for um where they're like why don't you let us help you why don't you let us show up and it's like i've had no choice but to be hyper independent i've had no choice but to figure things out i've had no choice but to work tooth and nail fight tooth and nail and so like it's hard for me to ask for help because i'm like i don't know i'm just so used to doing it on my own you know and trying to be strong as well i don't like crying in front of my parents because they're in south africa so i feel bad because obviously they're gonna feel sad and i know they can't do anything about it you know hyper hyper independence is difficult it's tiring it's painful and it also affects you in other ways america has forced me to become hyper independent let me not say america living abroad by myself has forced me to become hyper independent and that actually affects you in things like dating do i have it in me to let a man take care of me to and not in a bad way or a weird way like he's my bless our sugar daddy but in a way that when a man loves you he wants to take care of you and make things easy for you do i have it in me to sit back and let a man do things do i have it in me to consult with someone before i do things and make it happen for myself no not really it's something i have to work on and be like okay pause pause you don't have to do it yourself pause pause talk to someone let them help you and and that's not easy and it's not something i like i want to be soft i want to be delicate i want to be cute i want to be like you know whatever but like i'm so used to fighting for my life and figuring things out for myself it's hard for me to rely on on other people and other points i want to touch on but i don't want to expand on is number one visa stuff is confusing um immigration visas travel is so difficult when you're foreign it makes your life it's so much more difficult than the next person it scares you you're on edge if laws change you're affected you're at the mercy of other people forever until you can get a green card or something permanent so that's very scary when covid happened a world crisis a worldwide crisis pandemic i had to like talk to school and say can i please stay at school um i'll work in exchange for being able to stay at school um you're not allowed to work off campus as an international student now i'm like okay i need to get a job that's going to be an internship so that i can get paid so i can do you understand what i'm saying and it, that was hard for me my family was all cooped together at home um during covid and i was by myself guys i was scared i was scared i was terrified i was lonely i was tired but i had to be strong in front of them and i was by myself i would see my family like eating food together at home sitting at the table being together taking care of each other and i was all by myself going to walmart and not finding water trying to figure out where am i gonna get water i don't have a car you know just it's so lonely it is so lonely 
and people expect you to be cheery about it and it's it's hard and another thing that makes it hard is the idea of going back feels like a failure you feel like if I go back home, I'm failing somehow. I'm I'm letting people down. People, it's it's hard for people to accept you going home because they're like, what? You're fumbling. But home is home, and no one, will, no place will ever be home. And the peace you have, I understand people who move back because the peace you get, the peace you get, you can't replace it. And if you're someone who's ambitious and competitive, you feel like you're losing by going back home. And people make you feel like you're losing by going back home. You know by choosing your mental health and emotional health so that's some of the stuff that is i'm even getting emotional that's some of the stuff that's very difficult about living in america you're figuring out systems all the time everything is new very little support you're all by yourself um having to build a life you, the dating space is different that's another thing so like for me whenever i'm in essay i don't tend to question like oh will black men be attracted to me you know whatever man is attracted to me will be attracted to me but i don't question overall black men but in america in particular um, there's a culture within some black men where like they don't date black women and they talk down on black women and guess who's a black woman in America me so I don't like dating in spaces where I'm like oh I, I wonder does he date black girls where I have to prove myself like not prove myself but question if I'm worthy like bro because I'm black no I hate that I hate that and that's why I'm very um, I'm kind of picky with interracial dating because I will not put myself in a space where I have to question does he does this white man date black girls does this whatever man date black no 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 I'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna do that I have too much esteem for that but in America like there are some black men where you have to question like oh does he also date black men guys what is that if the black man is not for you who is like for real like for real you get me like for real and also the type of men are different as well like just there's this there's this assertiveness ego strength that african men have that not not to say that african-american men don't have please don't confuse me but it's different it comes out differently the culture is different this is about culture it's not about african men being stronger or better it's about the culture we have is different okay so you just have men with different culture that you have to like adapt to as well so yeah that's a little bit about how dating can be can be difficult as well and also just like if you end up you're likely to date a foreigner if you if you're going to move abroad by yourself so like you miss out on that if you like speaking your language you'll never get to like really speak your language again <laughs> you know <laughs> you won't be called tanasam you won't be called ranzu you won't be called whatever you'll be called babe love or or whatever culture the person you're marrying is so you're gonna have to be very open-minded regarding everything when you move now that takes me to the positives about living abroad bro it opens your mind you become open-minded. I went from being somewhat closed-minded to being so open-minded and not necessarily in a bad way. I've become more understanding of people. I've become more tolerant. I've become um, more willing to learn, more willing to, to mold myself in order to learn. You know what I mean? Uh, and being open-minded is a very good thing. Being more understanding of people is a very good thing. But of course you need to balance it so that you don't lose yourself and lose your, your morals. But like now, I feel like I'm such a world person and not worldly because I'm biblical, thank you Jesus. But um, I'm open to dating people of different cultures. I'm open to living in different countries. I'm open, I'm open to so much more now because I've expanded my world view and what I'm exposed to. You know what I mean? And also I've learned to fit in I've learned to fit in in different spaces. I, I now know how to like alter myself, adapt, so I can fit into different spaces. It's tiring though, but I know how to do it. Helps you in the worst workplace, helps you in many different, uh, many different things. Um, another pro about living abroad, this, this is very vain, it's not serious, but guys, concerts are easy. So like now people will talk about, oh, Burner Boy is coming to SA, and I'm like, I don't, I don't care because I will be able to see Burner Boy. He's in America so much, like I will see Burner Boy. I love Burner Boy, guys. He's like the love of my life, Loki. But um, I'm able to see Burner Boy. I was able to see Common. Like the concerts, guys, is so, it's so much easier to get access to these things and and even things like festivals and everything i've never been to coachella i want to go one day but like it's just about me making time and putting money together i don't have to think about how am i gonna get to america you know you're already there especially in america as well you're you're living within the culture that spreads into the world music artists like artists will always come to you artists will always tour in america you know they'll do a world tour and skip africa they will skip america so i get to go to these concerts if I want to, which again is not serious, but it's fun. Another thing too is ordering clothes. Bro, like the time it takes for me to get my clothes 
from Shein, from Fashion Nova, from these places. I get it so quick, I get it easy. Returning clothes, quick, easy. I don't deal with weird customs things. I don't deal with like, it's easy getting access to these clothes, ordering online, and that's like, that's a lot of fun, I can't lie. Like, I just, I love it. It's, I love it, it's great. It's really great. Another thing that's been great about living abroad, and this has to be a, an, it's also linked with your attitude as a person, it, ex, it has expanded my view of what is possible, you know? I don't think small now, I think about, um, when I think about what is possible, I really do think the world is my oyster, that I can access certain things. Now, of course, there's things like racism and, and sexism that, of course, will always um, try to hinder you as a woman who is black. But because of living abroad, the fact that I moved to America five years ago by myself, individually, 19 years old, and I graduated summa cum laude, I was the graduation speaker, um, I led people in graduation, I was the president of organizations, I started things in my school that are now a tradition, that happen every single year, and I'm a foreigner, you know what I mean? I. I got multiple internships and jobs, I made money, and now I have a job with like a global firm as a foreign person. That sounds unrealistic. That sounds like, whoa, like what? But because of that experience, I'm like, I have the confidence that I can go to any country. Of course, this may not be true, but I have the confidence that I can go anywhere. And look, I may not become Beyonce, but I can make a difference and I can, I can make a way, I can figure it out. It's made me bolder as a person. I do solo trips now. Before I moved to America, I, I didn't go on solo trips. Now, I travel solo. I go to different countries by myself and I make friends because I've had no choice but to move to a different country, make friends and survive by myself. So it's made me more confident, more outgoing, um, what else, more ambitious as well. And it forces you to grow up, hey? You will grow up and you will grow up quick. And that has pros and cons, but I think it's very good because I'm, it forces you to be more responsible. When you are a foreign person in a foreign country, you find yourself being more responsible than the people who are from that country. It makes sense because you know you have visa wars to fight. You know if you fail, you're facing deportation. You know if you do crime, that's deportation. Um, you have more to lose because it sends you way back than the next person. The other person, they get fired from a job, cool, they go, they stay home, move back home to their family, figure it out, whatever. You get fired, hey, the immigration people are saying you have so much time to leave the country or find a new job. Um, you don't you don't have family where you can go live with them. You, the consequences for you are way bigger, which can be a con, but also it makes you have to step up and be more responsible and apply yourself, which I think helps in life. And I haven't even tapped into the full potential of America yet, you know, and being foreign yet, you know. So, of course, we'll make an updated video, but those are some of the positives about living in, in a foreign country. And, oh, I forgot to mention, I'm a resource for other people now. So, like, you know, I don't know, but, like, you know, people in, like, West African countries, I'm generalizing here, it's not true for everyone, but... They will be like, oh yeah, I have family in, same for some Zim people. I have family here, 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 here. And like your average South African person, like you, you have family in Limpopo, in Bumalanga, in Western Cape, and that's how far it expands for you. Not everyone, please guys, no one comments and say that's not true. I'm not speaking for everyone, please don't misquote me and say I'm saying all South Africans, I'm not. Because I know there are plenty of South Africans who have moved and who do have that, okay? Just because us, our siblings are in the book, it doesn't mean everyone's are. So, um, but yeah, so I like that now I can say things like, oh, my brother, if he wants to visit me, come stay in my apartment, you know? So I get to be that for family members and, and for friends as well. And it's nice. It's fun. It's, it's something different as well. So that's something that's nice too. But guys, I don't want to make this video too long. Those are the pros and the cons of living in a foreign country. Um, in my case, living in America in particular, it has high highs. It has low lows oh living abroad can show you how low it can get but it can show you how high it can get and it can show you how high you can get but overall i would definitely encourage people if you ever have the opportunity to leave your state leave your province leave your city leave your country take it even if not forever take it so you can find out more about yourself so you can learn about yourself you know um some people live abroad come back home and they're like never i know plenty of people who came to america 
move back home and they're like, I will never go back. And I fully understand them. And until you live abroad or leave your city or whatever, you won't understand. So I would encourage everyone to at least try to do it once in their life. It's a privilege thing sometimes, sometimes it's a risk thing. Cause not everyone who moves abroad has money, hey? Some people go there and live in the pits and grind until they build. But if you have the opportunity to, I would definitely recommend that you do it. Um, and if you have lived abroad, comment down below. Let me know what that experience was for you. Uh, what country did you go to? Are you still there? How long were you there for? What made you leave your the? What made you leave and go home? Or what made you settle in that country? Comment down below. Let me know if there's a country you want to move to, a state, a province, a city. Comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts. But those are the pros and cons of living in America for me in particular, but also living abroad as a person. That's it for today, guys. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe and I will be back with more videos any videos you want to see comment down below let me know and I'll try and make it happen for you peace and love guys bye <laughs>